Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be taking a look at The Best of Manhunt Volume 1 and the recently published Volume 2. Now Manhunt was a late 50s, early 60s crime digest published in America and they had a whole host of fantastic big name authors writing short stories for them. Um, Stark House Press have pulled the very cream of the crop together and put them into these two volumes and boy oh boy there's some amazing stuff in here and that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So sit back relax and let's get to it. So this is the very first volume of The Best of Manhunt. There is a brand new volume which has just been published, which we'll have a look at in a minute. But this was the first volume that was published in July 2019. Now, Manhunt was an American crime digest that was published from the late 1950s into the early 60s and uh, featured all manner of uh, big name authors. Some were already established, some of them wrote under pseudonyms and some authors actually got their break uh, in the pages of Manhunt. So there's a real mixture of authors in here and the crime stories do generally pack a bit of a punch. I wouldn't call them like a twist at the end, but they're just generally hard hitting and they do think they, you know, some of them are, you could almost say they're, they're bordering on the horrific <laughs> in actual fact, but they're really, really great. And um, if you're a fan of sort of fifties, and 60s crime. You're going to find a lot of good stuff in here. So the cover first of all then, so Stark House have done a very good job with the jacket on this and they do um, have the miniature sort of thumbnails of the original copies of Manhunt magazine. Now if you actually wanted to pick up a couple of odd issues of Manhunt, even really nice, because it had such a big print run, even really nice copies are only sort of, you know, 10 to 15 dollars. The problem if you're in the UK is that they do take, um, they're quite expensive to uh, import uh, with postage being what it is. Um, so this is a great way of having the best of the content of those uh, in one nice convenient volume. On the back here, the cover to the 1957 issue, one of the earlier ones. And um, yeah, so here it is, at first appearing on the newsstands in late 1952. Manhunt was the acknowledged successor to Black Mask, which had ceased publication the year before as the venue for high-quality crime fiction. By April of 1956, it was being billed as the world's best-selling crime fiction magazine. That's why I guess copies are so common today, even online. Um, on its pages, over its 14-year run, appeared a veritable who's who of the world's greatest mystery writers, including Ed McBain, Mickey Spillane, Richard Deming, Jonathan Craig, Hal Ellison, Robert Turner, Jack Ritchie, Frank Kane, Craig Rice, Fletcher Flora, Talmarge Powell, Richard S. Prather, David Alexander, Harold Q. Masur, Gil Brewer, Helen Nielsen, Erskine Caldwell, Henry Slesser, David Goodis, Lawrence Block, John D. MacDonald, Clark Howard, Frederick Brown, Donald E. Westlake, Harlan Ellison, Harry Whittington, and Steve Frazee. I mean, what a list! The Best of Manhunt, that's this first volume, includes 39 of the original stories a forward by Lawrence Block and an afterward by Barry N. Mals Malsberg, as well as an introduction to the tortured history of the magazine by editor Jeff Vorzimmer. There we are. Now, um, I haven't read every one of these, but I've been dipping in and out. Um, the introduction and the history of the magazine is fascinating. It did have a bit of a, a roller coaster sort of history as a digest. Um, but they still managed somehow to, to keep themselves afloat for all those years. Um, so, I mean, there's so many great stories in there. It's difficult to know where to start, but I mean, let's have a, just, we'll just have a look, um, at the list here of what's, of the contents. So as you can see, the average sort of story is, I guess, six to 12 pages. They don't go much longer than that. Um, and, uh, well, there they all are, and it's a veritable who's who of sort of 50s and 60s crime fiction. Um, my favourites, I guess, are the, is the Lawrence Block content, also David Goodis. The two stories by Ivan Hunter um, are both really, really outstanding. Uh, I couldn't, after the, the very, in fact, the very first one is uh, On the Sidewalk Bleeding by Ivan Hunter, and that one you, you almost have to go and have a lie down afterwards. 
<laughs> it's like blimmin' egg. Um, but th there's one later on which Lawrence Block uh, mentions in his uh, forward as being particularly good, and one he remembered reading all these years later. And uh, what's it called here? It's called um, yeah, The Last Spin, and it's about sort of two rival gang members who have been forced into a room to settle a dispute and they're being forced into playing Russian roulette and uh, over the course of them putting one bullet in the barrel and spinning it and neither of them die and then they up it to two they start to get to know each other and um, by the time there's three bullets in the barrel they're actually like great friends and uh, they said yeah this Sunday we'll definitely go we'll give it one more spin each and if neither of us get shot we're definitely going out this Sunday. And, well, you can guess the uh, slightly bloody ending. <laughs> it's great stuff. But um, as I said, I'm a huge, huge fan of short stories and short story anthologies. And this one, if you're into 50s and 60s crime fiction, you're going to absolutely love it. Um, the only thing I would say, as much as they've done a great job on the cover, um, I wouldn't have minded a few more, even in black and white, cover reproductions inside perhaps between sort of each story um so it does sort of you know tell you here's one here so this one by Jonathan Craig Frank Frankie Smith which is the scrapbook printed in the September 1953 issue it would be really nice to just have a little picture of the uh the front jacket of um Manhunt magazine um just you know to preface it now anyway that was volume one and uh, what I've read of it so far has been just terrific really really terrific um, and lo and behold just published literally this month um i'm filming this in august yes so august 2020 uh was volume two so similar to the first one it's got a bit of a, a a history of the magazine this time by robert turner edited by the same chap with a forward by peter infantino and an introduction by john l breen and uh, this is a slightly, um, slightly thinner copy than the uh, the first volume. Once again, it keeps the same format with the, uh, the sort of the thumbnail covers, and it has some sort of praise for the first volume on the back here. Um, certainly, the first I heard of it was from. Tom and Eric on the Paperback Warrior podcast. And uh, their quote there may be the greatest short story compilation. The stories are brutal, yep, and filled with final page twists, or in other words, essential reading. Highest recommendation. And it was on the back of the Paperback Warrior po podcast and Tom's recommendation that I picked up the very first volume, and I certainly haven't regretted it. Um, really, really good stuff. Um, this one here from Hank Wagner from Mystery Scene. Talk about getting a lot of bang for your buck. This book is guaranteed to provide that in spades, a virtual who's who of crime fiction. So there you go. And, and they're right. So let's just have a look at the uh, the roll call for the uh, the second volume here. So lots of similar names that you might recognise, but certainly slightly different to the first volume. And whether they just did the very cream of the crop or there was loads more that said, why haven't you included this one? Why haven't you included that one? That they've been forced to go back and uh, and do a second volume. Um, and that's absolutely fine with me. So fantastic stuff. Um, readily available in the UK. They're $21.95 in America. I bought mine through Amazon uh, in the UK here and they work out about £12, £13 each, which I think for the size of the books and the enjoyment you're going to get out of them, I think is well, well worth your money. Um, so there we are. The Best of Manhunt and The Best of Manhunt Volume 2 from Stark Press. What I've read of these, just fantastic. And uh, they do both come recommended. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed this little look at these Manhunt books. If you have, do please give the video a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback content, and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.